This is where part one ended. Let's get into part two. Hi everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome to another video. As I explained in part one, I really underestimated the time that goes into creating a 12th scale miniature. I try to pay so much attention to details that time kind of gets away from me. But here we are at part two of this miniature of Hagrid's hut. Let's start with some store-bought items. I found these little 12th scale chairs in a dollar store and thought they made the perfect chairs for Hagrid's hut. I'm aging up the chairs with acrylic paint and sand them down a little and they're good to go. Next up is this egg creature. The movie makers even named it that. So I created this thing in a live stream and will paint it for this video. If you want to see how I've created the egg creature, I will leave a link in the iCard section in the top right corner. The egg creature can be seen in the movie Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The creature doesn't really have a backstory and it is not in the books. After doing a bit of online research, I found out that Gary Pollard created this creature. On set it was called Egg Creature. It was purely as a strange creature for Hagrid to throw a tidbit to in the movie. As you can see, I've painted the egg a sandy color and the creature red. I am just touching up the egg here and there and then going in on the inside of the egg with a dark brown. After that, I'm adding some dirt marks on the outside and I'm going in with some shading and highlights for the creature. I will list all the materials below along with links if you would like to purchase any of these materials. And then of course also some details on the outside of the egg. Once the paint is all dry, I'm adding this product called Glossy Accents by Ranger to add to the creature look. Once that's all dry and glossy looking, I'm adding it to a bed of hay and this creature is done. Moving on to making some candles. I have these dowels that are cut in tiny pieces for the candles. I then color them white with a Posca pen. You can also use acrylic paints for this. And with some wood glue, I glue on tiny pieces of string. And once that's dry, you have the perfect little candle. Of course, I could not forget Hagrid's umbrella. So from a cocktail umbrella, I created the perfect pink umbrella wand. I used pink acrylic paint for the top and brown acrylic paint for the handle. To the end of the handle, I filed an indent to make it more look-alike. This is the final umbrella. In one of the movies you can see Feng is lying on a rug. I thought that the back of this fabric looks exactly like the rug he's on. So all I'm doing here is cutting out a rectangular piece of that fabric, fray it at two edges and age it up with some distress ink. Hey. 
Hagrid has loads of cages and crates dangling from the ceiling in his hut, so of course I had to create those as well. Here I am putting together one of those crates, which I create with popsicle sticks and wood glue. The base and the sides of this crate are the same. I then glue the same long sides on. And then I use some short parts of popsicle sticks to close the other sides of the crate. And here are two different ones. They work up very fast and you can basically create them however you want. Now we're on to the roof turrets. I wasn't sure if I should make these out of foam, like all the shingles, or out of paper. In the end I chose to go with foam because it's a little bit more pliable than paper. I created this test shape out of some cardboard and I used one of the sticks I have also used to make the candles to make the point of the roof turret. Then I traced around the cardboard onto the foam and cut out the shapes. With a hole punch I punch out the hole in the middle of the turret. I glue the main turret piece together and cut these little indents on the side. This is to give it a little bit more shape and let it curve over the rooftop. I cut off the pointy bit of the dowel, then cut them in the middle, file them down and then glue on a piece of foam. When I put the dowel into the roof turret, this piece of foam will sit underneath and give it that extra bit more strength. And here you can see that I've filed down at the top of the turret, so it looks like the ones on Hagrid's hut. From some pieces of foam I created these rooftop vents that are just a little extra detail on the roof. And now finally, finally, we're getting onto the inside of Hagrid's hut with some multi-purpose filler. This is just simple wall filler. I speckle this on the entire inside of the rooftop and this is what it looks like. Before I move on with the rest of the roof, I let that dry and as that is drying, I am going to attach the hut to the base. This was exciting and scary at the same time. I attached the hut to the base with a lot of wood glue and let that dry overnight. Then with some balsa wood, I created these stairs. It's very simple stairs and I glue them on with super glue. Now that the roof is finally dry, I can move on to adding some detail with some popsicle sticks. I chose to do this type of roof with the speckle and the wood, as it gives that medieval look. You've seen me create the fireplace in part 1 of Hagrid's hut, and this is me placing it inside the hut. Then back to the roof, as the wood is all properly dried now and glued on, I am going in with some acrylic paint, painting the wood dark and adding some shading. You won't see me do this in this video, but I'm going to attach these hooks to the ceiling and hang all the crates, cages, ropes and nets from. Now the legs of Hagrid's hut look a little bit fragile and out of place, so let's fix that. Under the removable part I've put some baking paper so the pebbles won't stick to the base. I'm using lots and lots of clear craft glue, it's basically Fabri-Tac. And then after that I'm going in with wood glue to put in the little gaps as well. Hagrid's hut still needs a proper entrance and steps to the front door. I'm creating all this from balsa wood. I'm sanding down the front steps to make them look like stone. And then attaching them with super glue. You don't want to know how often I glued my fingers together during this project.
Then there is one more thing I have to add to the roof, which is a chimney. I'm making the chimney out of some simple pieces of cardboard. I'm taking off some of the roof shingles, just so that the chimney sits more flat on the surface. Then of course, who would have thought that we would be done with the egg cartons and the bricks? Of course, I had to finish off the entrance and the chimney as well with this technique. And then onto the most satisfying part, the painting. Now onto the fun part of this project, and that is painting the outside area with these beautiful, beautiful greens. As most of you know, green is my favorite color. For some weird reason, this was so satisfying to do, just seeing this whole outside area transform in some lush green landscape. Here I am applying a mixture of PVA glue and sand just to add some extra texture and interest to this piece. And then I thought, whoa, that's a lot of sand. Let's add some uh, black tea for some soil accents. Then my absolute, absolute favorite part of this project was making the pumpkins, because there is no Hagrid's hut without pumpkins. These pumpkins are completely made out of polymer clay. There is no foil inside. And I don't know why this was so satisfying. It just was. And I actually think of making these into polymer clay pins in the future. So enjoy this little time lapse of me creating pumpkins. This is the 12th scale Hagrid that I used to measure everything for this miniature. In the future, I will create a Hagrid doll to go with the hut. Here I am creating Hagrid's iconic chair that can be seen in the movies. I start by sketching out a rough outline of the side of the chair and I have left most of this sketching material in so you can see that I'm just creating it as I go. Once I'm happy with what I've sketched, I am going to cut it out. I have created the back of the chair and here I am gluing on four of the armrests. I say four because I'm going to give it some more dimension by gluing on a strip of paper over the two armrests on either side. Here I am attaching the strips of paper I was talking about and this is how the chair gets more depth and looks like an actual chair. And the same principle I'm using for the back of the chair as well. Then on the sides I am gluing a piece of twine so it looks like a leather upholstered chair once I'm done painting it. Then for some final 3D element, I'm adding these 3D pearls on the side. In the end, they will look like rivets. This is what the unpainted chair looks like. I lost the footage of me actually painting the chair, but I'm painting it in a dark brown acrylic paint and adding rivets with this copper pen. 
Off camera, I created some little additions from polymer clay like the teapot, the milk jug, a cauldron and a raven. Then the final thing I'm gonna show you is me adding this bench to the hut. As I mentioned in the first part of this two-part series, I took a lot of creative liberties whilst making this project. As the filmmakers have used two sets to film the interior of Hagrid's hut, it's very hard to determine size. The table, for instance, doesn't fit in the hut. That's just not possible if you convert all the sizes into 12th scale, but I'm happy with what I did place in the hut. So let's have a look at the final result and everything put together. And with that, Hagrid's hut is complete. I really hope you like this project. Please be kind to me, as it's the first serious 12th scale miniature I've ever made. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps my channel out. Make sure to check out my socials and consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you're new here, welcome! Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.